Well, good morning, church family. It's Pastor Dawn here for the Hope for the Day. Yesterday, Sunday, was Palm Sunday, and it was great celebrating with our palm branches the day that Jesus came into Jerusalem on a donkey, and all the streets were lined with the people waving their palm branches, yelling, Hosanna, save us. This starts the last week that Jesus spent here on earth, what we call Holy Week. We will be bringing to you devotions throughout the week, Thursday being our Monday Thursday, where we celebrate and, and talk about the last meal Jesus shared. Friday night is Good Friday, and we will have a service live streamed on Friday night at 630, where Jesus, the night that he was crucified, this day really makes Easter significant when first he died and then three days he rose from the dead. But today, I'd like to kind of start with the Garden of Gethsemane. This is a passage that really speaks to me, especially as the pastor of congregational care. But it means so much when we talk about Jesus being fully human and fully God, which is a very difficult concept to grasp sometimes. But the fully God, as, as God the Son was here, is so important to, to understand as we're going into this week because God, Jesus, was not capable of sin. He was completely perfect. He had not an ounce of sin in him. He, he did not sin. He could not sin as God, which made this sacrifice so important because only God could take that sacrifice on behalf of the entire world, you and me, who are imperfect people who do sin, who do mess up. And each and every time it, it takes us away from God. So this was God's ultimate plan. that He had a final plan that would bring us back to God each and every time through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ as Jesus stood in the gap for us and sacrificed his life. So this passage here actually comes to you on Thursday night after the Lord's Supper, so I'll skip ahead to the Gethsemane because this is a very vital time to me where it all comes together, where we get to see Jesus as fully God, but here we're going to see Jesus as fully human, which is very vital. You see, there was a special place that Jesus liked to retreat to, and it was called Gethsemane, the Garden of Gethsemane. It was known to be on Mount Olives, which is lined with olive trees. And literally the name Gethsemane means olive press. So think about that for a moment as we read this scripture, the significance of just an olive being crushed and pressed. So I'm going to read from Mark chapter 14. And we're going to start with verse 32. And, and you can read about him praying to God right after the meal in all the Gospels. But here in Mark 14, here's how Mark puts it. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and Jesus said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. So he took Peter, James, and John, those were the three closest to him. He took them along with him, and, and he began to be deeply distressed and troubled. My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. He said to them, stay here and keep watch. So going a little farther, he fell to the ground and he prayed that if possible, the hour might be passed over him. And he cries out, Abba, Father, everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me. Here is Jesus and his ultimate human way, going to God the Father, crying out, please, if it's possible, take this cup from me. And Luke, it even talks about and describes how his tears, his sweat were in the form of blood. How many times have you and I thought, why do I have to go through this? Why is this happening? Take this from me, God. Jesus demonstrated the humanness of even Jesus cried out to God the Father. Yet in this twist then of events, 
as soon as he was able to cry out what God already knew, he said, yet not what I will, but what you will. So in other words, Jesus submitted and surrendered into the hands of the Father, knowing that God's plans are best. He returned to his disciples and he found them sleeping. And Simon, he said to Peter, are you asleep? Could you not keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the body is weak. This is why we need accountability and support right here. Verse 39, once more he went away and he prayed the exact same thing. And when he came back, he again found his disciples sleeping because their eyes were heavy. They did not know what to say to him. So returning the third time, he said to them, are you still sleeping and resting enough? The hour has come. Look, the son of man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer. This is such a significant part. You see here, Jesus is showing us, and I am sure there are people right now listening that have had moments of this, probably even this week. And maybe we think, well, we don't have to be, be, we have to be strong. We don't have to be weak. We shouldn't cry. We shouldn't go to God. Maybe that shows our lack of faith. And Jesus demonstrated the importance and significance of crying out to God and being real with him. Tears are good. God gave us tears. And so what that moment did, as we read in the Psalms, a lot of times, David, one Psalm, he'll be, yay, praise the Lord. And the next Psalm, where are you? Why have you forsaken me? See, it's the realness of our human heart crying out to God. And then that allowed Jesus to surrender then into God's will, trusting my heart has been heard and now I trust in your plan. And what did that experience with God do? It didn't change the plan. God does have the best plan. Jesus had to pay the price for the benefit of everyone. But what it gave Jesus is the strength to immediately leave the garden. And right there we see is where Judas was waiting for him. And Jesus says, let us go. Here comes my betrayer. On Friday, we'll see what happens next with Good Friday as Jesus sacrificed and experienced the most gruesome, cruel death possible. He was able to get through it because he was able to go to God for the authenticity and then God gave him the strength of what he needed to endure. And then the story doesn't end on the cross, but three days later, we see that death had, did not have the final say that Jesus rose from the dead and he is now ascended into heaven and with God the Father and in our hearts forever and ever without death or pain. You see, friends, church family, it's okay. And in fact, encouraged, follow the example of Jesus. If this is the week where you just wanna cry out to him, cry out to God, be real, honor those feelings and know that God does have the plan and he will get you through this way. The Psalmist David says in Psalm 23, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. God will not leave us in that shadow, but he will get us through it to the ultimate other side. So be encouraged this week as we walk the last steps with Jesus. And as always, if you need prayer, you can email We Care. You can call the church office. And we do have a lot of people now calling, asking to get in a group for Thursday night celebrate recovery groups. Maybe you're experiencing grief in a new and fresh way this week. Maybe you're feeling stresses and anxieties that you didn't know were there. Talk it out. Honor those feelings. James says you can't heal a wound by saying it's not there. Follow the lead of Jesus and be encouraged and be strengthened. So let us pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for showing us how real we can be in our human form. We have a heart that needs to be heard and you are with us. 
to comfort us, to bring us peace, and to give us the strength and the endurance to follow through whatever your plan may ultimately be, which is always a plan that is good for all of us. So be with us in this day, Lord, as we walk this last week with you to the cross and then to victory. We love you, Lord. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said, amen. We'll have a good holy week. We will see you next weekend. God bless you.